All right then, gang. So this has been a long time coming, but I think we're at the point now where as coders, developers, or whatever other title you might have, we cannot dismiss AI as a part of our workflow anymore because it is here for the long haul. And I was putting off making any kind of generative or agentic AI-related content for a while for a few reasons, mainly because it's evolving so quickly that it probably renders any content out of date a few days after I publish it, and also because I'm all about learning how to code. And I I guess I thought that using AI to generate code and make applications for us takes a lot of that learning away. Certainly it strips back a lot of the sense of achievement that you get from learning something new anyway, or even from just solving a problem after maybe wrestling with it for a few hours. But I would be naive for thinking that our role as developers in this new golden era of AI and agents and whatnot is not going to change because it will change, especially as models and tools evolve and the capabilities of those things continue to grow as well. And the important word there is change because I don't think for various reasons that AI is in any kind of position at the moment to replace developers. But I do think it's important to adapt and embrace whatever tools become available to us in any way, shape or form that helps us. So so with that in mind, in this series, I want to explore how AI tools can aid us as developers to make us more productive and even allow us to be more creative. And there's a bunch of different tools out there that can help us, ranging from full-on vibe encoding stuff like Bolt and Lovable, to tools we can integrate into a more focused way into a typical workflow like Copilot and Claude Code. You've also got fully AI-driven editors like Cursor and Windsurf, which are a little bit like VS Code clones, but they're fully baked with different AI features. Now, I'm not going to delve into all these different tools in this series, and instead I'm going to laser in on GitHub Copilot and VS Code, which is what I've been using a lot of the time, and it fits into my workflow quite nicely, well, mostly anyway, but I will also have a little play around with Bolt as well and see what we can make in a little vibe coding session in the next lesson. We're also going to be looking at something called MCP and MCP servers, which basically allow AI models to communicate with APIs that you or your application might use, for example, GitHub or Superbase. And then in the future, I do plan on making more advanced courses about other tools like maybe Claude Code, which I do also like or OpenAI Codex, and some other stuff as well. Anyway, for this course, since we're going to be using Copilot with VS Code, you're going to need to install VS Code first of all, which you can grab at code.visualstudio.com. You'll also need to install the Copilot extension as well, which you can do by coming to this extensions tab and just searching for Copilot up here. It's this extension right here, and when you install that, it's also going to install a companion extension called Copilot Chat. So you're going to end up with two extensions in total installed. Once it is installed, you might need to restart VS Code, but eventually you should see the little Copilot icon up here, which you can click to toggle the chat. And also the same icon down here at the bottom as well. Now, you will need a GitHub account to use Copilot, and it might ask you to log in when you first install it or fire it up. So make sure you have an account before you begin and then sign up for a Copilot plan. Now, you can use Copilot for free with this free plan right here, and that gives you access to these models within Copilot chat, and you also get these limits as to how many chats and code completions you can perform with Copilot. Or you could sign up for a pro account for $10 a month, and that gives you access to other more premium models and unlimited chats and code completions with the free plan models. So this is the plan I use right here, but you could also fork out $39 a month and get access to the Pro Plus plan, which gives you the latest anthropic models and more premium requests as well that use the premium models. And just a quick note on those premium requests because it can be quite confusing as to what exactly a premium request actually is. I've got a table right here with the multipliers for those requests to different models. So if you think about each agent session that you have using a base value of one premium request, it's then multiplied by these modifiers depending on which model you use. So for example, if I'm on a free plan, then this model has a multiplier of one. So in other words, every session is just considered a single premium request. On paid plans, if I was to use GPT 4.1, the modifier is zero. So that means every session using this model doesn't count towards any premium requests. They're free. If I use Opus 4 though, then each request gets a modifier of 10. So if I had five different sessions with the agent using this model, that would count as 50 premium requests. Now this is likely to change as and when different models get released and also because the pricing structure and the way premium requests are calculating has been changed occasionally already so it's wise to expect more. 
Now, just while we're talking about models, you might find that certain models perform better at certain tasks. So it's always prudent to choose the right model for the job when you're using AI to help your code. So on the GitHub docs right here, we've got a list of different models and what they're good at. So for example, O4 Mini is good for simple or repetitive tasks. I found that Opus 4 is very good with more complex coding problems. That's the latest anthropic one. And GPT 4.1 is more of a general purpose model. Now, I guess the proof is always in the pudding. So I would recommend that you try out different models yourself for different tasks and then just compare the results to see what best fits your own workflow because every developer works differently and what's best for me and how I work might not necessarily be best for you and how you work. And just one more thing too, you can also bring your own models to Copilot, which I would recommend doing through something like Open Router. Now, Open Router, if you've never heard of it, is a bit like a model aggregator where you can purchase credits and then just distribute those through any of the different models from Google or Anthropic or OpenAI, etc., so that you can use them all with a single payment plan in just one place. And when you make your requests to any models that you bring to Copilot yourself, like through Open Router, then Copilot's usage limits to the premium models do not apply. So in order to do this, you'll need to sign up for an Open Router account and add some credits to your account account, which is really easy to do. Once you've done that, you'll need to create an API key so we can use the open router models from within Copilot. And you can do that by going to your settings and then clicking on the API keys links. From here, you can create a new key by clicking on this button, giving the key a name, an optional credit limit, and then click on create. That's going to generate a new key for you, which you can copy and then use inside Copilot to access the models from your open router account. So I'm going to show you how to use the API key in a moment to add those open router models to Copilot. But before we do, I just want to show you a couple of other things. So I'm going to toggle the Copilot chat window over here by clicking on the Copilot icon. And when you do that, you should see the chat window on the right. And down here is where we can start asking questions or asking Copilot to make changes to the code. You're also going to see these other things like adding context, the tools icon down here, and also the different modes available to us, chat, edit, and agents. And I'm going to talk about all of those things later in the course. But for now, I just want to show you this other drop down right here, which is where we can choose the AI model that we're chatting with. So if you click on that, you're going to see all the models available to you. And your list might be different from mine, depending on which co-pilot plan that you sign up for. But you can see in my plan, I have access to the standard models, which don't use any premium requests to chat with, and also the premium models like Claude and Gemini. So these are all the models that come bundled with the Copilot plan, whether it's the free one, the pro one, or the pro plus plan. But also below those, you can see these other models. And these are the models I've manually brought in from my Open Router account. And when I chat with these models inside Copilot, they won't count towards my usage limits for my plan. So to add those models, you can click on this Manage Models option at the bottom. And that opens a list of options up here. And from here, you can add provider specific API keys if you have accounts or plans with Anthropic or Gemini, OpenAI, or any of these other model providers. We can also select open route as well. And if you hover over this option, you should see a little cog to the right of it. If you click on that cog, it's going to ask you for your API key for open router, which I showed you how to get a moment ago. Now, if you didn't see that cog next to the open route option, just click on the option itself. And if it's the first time using it within Copilot, then it's going to bring up the same key input. So just paste that key in right here. And when you do that, Copilot is going to have access to every single model that open router provides. Provides. Now, once you've done that and we go back to the list of providers, we can now click directly on Open Router to see all the models available to us from this provider. And there's an absolute ton of them. And you can just check any models you might want to use with Copilot. Now, when you check them, it's going to add those models to the drop down options in the chat window down here. And you can switch between them freely as you chat. Now, just recently, I've been having a few problems with the Anthropic models through Open Router, which is a shame, but I do like Gemini 2.5 Pro, which is what I use a lot of the time in my workflow. Anyway, so now we've got some basic setup out of the way and we've talked a little bit about the different models we can use in Copilot. And in the next lesson, I want to take a quick sidestep and trudge through a vibe coding session using a tool called Bolt. And then after that, we're going to take a more focused approach, come back to VS Code and see how Copilot can be used within a more traditional setup and workflow.
Wow. Well, by the way, if you want early access to the entire course now, you can grab it at the netninja.dev website. So I will leave this link down below the video. You can buy the course for $3, or if you prefer, you can sign up for a NetNinja Pro subscription. And for that, you get access to all of my courses, early access to future courses, and also instant access to my premium masterclass courses, which are much longer as well. That's just $9 a month, and you get your first month half price using this promo code right here. So again, I will leave this link down below the video.